Hey everybody, it's Mardina. I wanted to welcome you to my mini angel Q&A. Today in this video, I have a clarion call to action for all of you dormant star seeds. The activated star seeds, you kind of have an idea about what your mission might be, but this call is in particular for the star seeds who have not really activated their mission and they're just in like a state of dormancy and just like whenever we were kids and our moms were calling for us to get out of bed and get ready for school a lot of us don't want to wake up and we really we don't want to get um, away from our nice snuggly nest and our comfortable way of thinking about things our comfortable and known way of living our life and doing what we do. So it really is difficult for a lot of people to kind of um, turn that tide in their mind and say, okay, I know I came here for a reason and it is time for me to um, wake up, smell the coffee or the hot tea and to begin to handle my business. And just like um, a lot of people, we have a lot of um, maybe doubt or hesitation about uh, really changing up the way we're living our life and dreaming our dreams. But it is so important that we begin to do that because this is the clarion call to action if there ever was. Right now, the challenges uh, that planet Earth is going through and that humanity is going through, it requires that the star seeds that are here that made a commitment to come here and we made agreements and we entered into contracts that we would come and that we would be willing to be very brave and to put ourselves out into the world with information, with ideas that might be very challenging for other people, especially sleepers that are not awake. It might be very challenging for them to accept, to appreciate, and to um, even, you know, handle us. And But we knew that there were risks, but we also knew there are rewards. The rewards are enormous in that we have the um, just the satisfaction of knowing that we came into this dimension from uh, with the the uh, veil between the worlds, and we knew that we would um, not really have direct access to the information, the ideas that we learned in other lifetimes because we went through this veil of amnesia. But this is also a blessing because we get a lot more, um, I wanna say value, uh, bang for the buck whenever we can just move forward from that place of faith and trust that um, we do have a soul mission and that, we, um, that we're here to do something that's valuable, that, it, that is important. I honestly don't think one person's soul mission is more valuable than another, that uh, as a group, whenever we all take steps to activate and to fully uh, step up into our shining and into our beauty, that we can come together and create something that is fabulous. But if there are some sleepers that are dormant and they're not willing to bring their beauty and their special gift into the whole matrix, then we're not going to get as much as what we could on the whole. So that's why it's so important that all of you, dormant star seeds, that you start to take actions to wake up. And I really believe that before we were born, our higher self had a like a kind of um, a pep talk with 
the ego part of our personality and it said okay listen there's going to be a handful of symbols and keywords and we're going to communicate to you through different modalities different methods sometimes your angels will give you a little nudge or give you some sort of encouragement but we are just like programmed before we come in here that there are certain signs and symbols and codes and light waves and even words or maybe mantras and chants that are going to stimulate you into activating out of dormancy and start to download some of the memories, some of the gifts, ideas that are on a much higher plateau than what our ego is used to reaching. Uh, one of the keys is our very own first name. Actually, our full name, like our maiden name, that you're born with is one of the most powerful sort of activators. So anytime that somebody says or calls your whole full name, it is a little bit of a wake up call and your ego personality goes, Ooh, what was that? <laughs> and it kind of sparks something and that trail will lead to a higher thought and still a broader thought if we keep following that trail. There's a lot of different symbols and I've talked about these in other videos that you can go back and look. Uh, one of the, the, uh, the symbols for me, actually there's several that are really powerful for me, but the Triketra is one of them. The Flower of Life is another one and the ohm symbol but there are so many more and everybody is going to kind of be attuned to different symbols that are just meaningful and if you find some that are particularly meaningful for you then by all means immerse yourself with those wear them as your jewelry you might wear them on the clothes that you like to um, wear every day or even set them up in your house or your office so that you're exposed to them every time you walk into a room that holds your power symbols when you look at that symbol it starts to kind of wake up some of the dormant uh, parts of yourself and it's kind of a stimulator and an activator and it just kind of gets you moving forward to some uh, higher thought processes and one thing leads to another and leads to another and, and that is the way that we all begin to uh, wake up you know um, if you I really feel that if you are attracted to my material that you are a star seed either um, in some form of activation you may be dormant you may be uh, uh, kind of moving through the activation pro process or you might be fully activated but I definitely feel that birds of a feather flock together and we're drawn to uh, speakers and to people that can kind of help us and um, lift us up and help us to do what we came here to do so just trust that and also uh, have some faith and trust in your own crew like your angels your highest guardian angel your spirit guides your teachers they can give you a little bit of encouragement and a little nudge whenever you feel lost or you may feel like out of sorts or out of balance. Unfortunately, right now, a lot of times uh, dormant star seeds have to clear a lot of old programming that might be still in their system that are keeping them from having the um, the courage that's necessary to let go of the known and be able to break out and and do what they came here to do 
Um, often we may have old belief systems that kind of keep us in what we call dark web trapping systems. We may be attached to old paradigms, old ways of doing things, even old worship structures that we were very committed to. And unfortunately, there are times where we may have entered into uh, contracts or um, uh, ways of giving away our power that uh, maybe like an oath or a promise that are no longer serving our highest soul good. Maybe they never did, but definitely not now. And we still have attachments to those. So one of the things that a lot of people have to do in order to activate themselves as a starseed is to take some measures to clear all of these old uh, attachments, old paradigms, old belief systems, uh, old structures of worship and clear them out of our matrix and then sort of do a reboot. And, um, and that helps us to get into a better position to fully activate and follow through with our, our soul's mission. This is definitely a time in humankind's history that we need all of our fully activated star seeds. We need them doing their job. We need activated star seed motivational speakers. We need activated healers that um, can work with star seeds. Hold on a second. <coughs> Man, the um <coughs> oh gosh. I think um <coughs> all right, my apologies, y'all. The ragweed out here on the ranch is really going it's going crazy right now. But we need our fully activated healers that are able to read a star seed and see, you know, where they are in their activation process and what sort of a, of a um, healing modality is going to help them uh, release whatever it is that is blocking them from being able to wake up and to fully activate. So that might look like uh, Reiki teachers or Reiki healing. There are so many different ways um, of natural healing modalities. And I honestly want to encourage you as much as possible to go for natural healing modalities, higher vibrational approaches, uh, the flower remedies, the uh, herbals, um, even uh, mineral exhalers, there's all kinds of natural uh, modalities that are more in harmony with star seeds than going the allopathic approach. And, and everything has its place and you may need to, uh, you know, kind of take bits and pieces of allopathic, like the traditional allopathic medicine, but I am definitely encouraging you to expand and to um, think for yourself. And unfortunately, traditional, a lot of times those traditional um, healers and doctors, they are so immersed in the dark web trapping systems that they they can't suggest to you those alternative healing methods because they can lose their license if they were to su suggest that. So a big part of being an activated starseed is uh, dialing in on what types of therapies are going to be the best for you and what sort of approach that you need to take and sometimes you can get an outside opinion or an outside reflection that can 
give you some clues or maybe show you some different options that you hadn't thought of or maybe even confirm some of the ideas that you did think of but you weren't too sure about but there this is definitely a time that we have to step up into our power to be an activated starseed and not give our power away to other people to think for us and be willing to be responsible for uh, whatever results we get when we get results that are less than stellar less than what we want then we go back and we make adjustments you may not throw every bit of that out but you might need to adjust a piece here and there you might need to add something in you might need to do less of one thing more of another or you might need to kind of you know rethink the whole process and I, another thing that you just want to realize is that as you come back into full vibrancy and back into balance and you start to detox your physical, then you are going to have to make adjustments on any supplements that you take or anything that you have been using. So be mindful that um, what is really nurturing you this week, you may need to make adjustments and tweaks on that next week. So just know that and we really get set in our ways and when we find something that really just makes us feel good and we feel energetic and we feel vibrant, we're like, wow, I have to take that every day. And we, we just want to know that as we begin to dial in on um, a lifestyle that supports an activated star seed, that the things that we eat and drink, the thoughts that we put into our head and that we dwell on, they all affect that vibrancy. And we just want to um, work towards detoxing thought patterns that are uh, that drag our energy field down that drag our personal magnetism down that squelch our creativity or keep us in a place of dormancy and and always be tweaking and adjusting and discerning the outcome and how do you feel and do you feel like you're making progress or do you feel like you're spinning your wheels or do you feel like you need to do some more on one level? If you really make a daily practice of sitting with your guidance system, your angels, your teacher guides, uh, your highest guardian angel, then you're going to get those little nudges and those little ideas and Honestly, you have to be willing to trust what you get and you're going to get um, and they won't give you the whole thing usually all at once because that would fry our wires. So they give us a little bit and your job is to take action on the pieces that you do get. Do your best to take some positive action on a regular basis, commit and follow through and then make adjustments, be willing to uh, make adjustments. But this is definitely a clarion call to action for all star seeds. We need our star seed uh, healers. We need our star seed mothers that are willing to hold a space because there are a lot of of activated star seed babies that are being born. So they're being born basically already activated and knowing their soul mission. And we need those high vibrational star seed mothers that are, have health and vibrancy in their systems in all levels. And they are willing to commit to holding that space for these amazing starseed babies to come into this dimension and it's not an easy job because they are really high frequency and they're um, I want to say demanding in that the old paradigm and the old way of raising your children and teaching them and caring for them we're going to need to really be creative and um, 
one of the ways that you can uh, get more dialed in on the needs of your starseed babies is just calling their highest guardian angel and communing with their highest guardian angel. Sometimes you need to do that through your own so that you can get the, um, the gist of the matter of what uh, what their needs are and the highest and best way to meet their needs as far as their nutrition, their um, the things to protect them, to help them to rest and to uh, be feel safe and to uh, feel comfortable and to thrive. The old paradigm, the old ways of thinking and doing things is... Um, I feel like a lot of times it's it's a trapping system of dark web of the icky, you know, kind of cabal stuff that want to squelch light workers, light warriors, the rainbow light warriors, the star seeds and they've done that in a in a number of ways through our education, through the different uh pieces that they uh, are forcing teachers to teach in our education systems, but also through our allopathic medicine. And for so long, we have set such a store on um, on having good insurance and um, you know taking taking care of your children and having the best insurance. And and uh, but I feel like we really need to rethink and revisit that hugely i mean totally a revamp and be very cautious on uh, what you expose your starseed babies to and your starseed children on an ongoing basis in the ways of food but especially in the ways of medicine and vaccines vaccinations um i do feel like i mean we all have to trust your own gut as a parent but um, really do your research. Don't just do a, a little glance at it. This is something to really put your heart into and ask your own angelic team to help you discern the truth of the matter of the recommendations on those lines of the vaccinations and um, to really do your research on uh, what else is available that can keep your child safe and um, definitely don't uh, cheat out on that. Do your own research. It is hugely an important time that we have activated star seed fathers. So these are men who are willing to, uh, to really be true fathers and protectors for the star seed babies and the star seed mothers and not just seed droppers, not just men that are just, you know, going through the process, but that are truly willing to step up to the plate and um, to be in that responsible, uh, activated, divine masculine energy who can think for the big picture and think for the long term and beyond their personal, maybe their personal uh, needs at the time. We, we need to have our starseed fully activated politicians. And we do have some of those that are uh, coming up and, and that are shining right now. And it's really exciting to see, but there are a lot more uh, those uh, dormant starseeds that your mission is to activate as a, a politician in the light of for the higher good, a fully activated starseed politician. We need our activated artists. These people can um, help other starseeds to wake up and to activate more of their creativity, maybe even to heal through our artwork or just to um, access uh, other higher parts of our creativity. We need fully activated starseed musicians that are willing to create pieces that can heal just through the music, 
that can create uh, musical pieces that can inspire and that can encourage us to step out of our comfort zone and to face our fears, fears of being wrong, fears of looking foolish, fears of being different, uh, fears of being persecuted because we're different and because we're willing to, uh, to kind of step outside the norm. A lot of times, um, our, one of our biggest fears is being cut out of the herd and, um, and being persecuted because in some of our other lifetimes, that's exactly what happened. We might have spoke our mind and we might have done it because for the good reasons, for wanting to be a blessing or wanting to heal someone or to help them, but um, they did not see it in the light and we might have been totally persecuted for that piece, for thinking outside the norm and outside the box. So um, one of the ways that you will know if you are dormant is if you feel frustrated, you feel maybe um, like you haven't done your best. You may feel like you have more, but you don't quite know what it is. Um, Sometimes we are, um, we have to create a um, environment that will allow us to, to be, to be activated and to be germinated and to bloom. So I'm a gardener and some of the, the seeds that I ordered, they have to be nicked and then you have to give those seeds time to establish roots and that might look like um, for some of the dormant star seeds to they may need to do some clearing work on the things that we talked about earlier like attachments to unhealthy ways of thinking living doing even unhealthy relationships maybe an unhealthy career path or attachments to old paradigms, belief systems, structures of worship. So we, you might need to do some clearing work on those uh, pieces of business. And then that will allow you to, to kind of sink some roots down. And once my seeds, once I get roots on them, then I can change their environment from some water to some warm soil and what that might look like to a star seed that's dormant is to do some meditation practices so uh, you sink a a soil or a, a seed into a pot into that dark moist soil and then you give it sunshine so that would be the like meditation processes it doesn't have to be like really big and boogie woogie. It can be very simple. Just give yourself a, um, you know, 10 minutes to focus on your breathing. There are so many different ways to meditate. It's not even funny, but my favorite is the breathing exercises. I particularly uh, go to the Hatha yoga breathing exercises and I have videos on that. I have some audios on that and I also have some different uh, blog posts that have um, meditation ideas and strategies and practices. If, um, if you need help with that, just uh, put a comment on this video and or send me an email or message me and I'll do my best to kind of clue you in on where those at. But you, you have to make a commitment to change and then follow through with that and so give yourself that meditation time on a regular basis and then the other component of that waking up that seed that is germinating is to get um, this the enough the right amount of sunshine and so that's light and um, 
it's not necessary not necessarily like walking out in the sunshine although I can't recommend that enough I I love to get out and exercise outside and I I like to walk ride my horse do yoga outside and to uh, sit with um, I like to sit with the the Sun in the morning and in the evening and another thing that um, is particularly uh, powerful is to just in your meditations to to visualize light coming into your third eye from the Holy Spirit from the Grand Central Sun uh, emanating uh, the Holy Spirit emanates through our Grand Central Sun and so when we can sit with the sunrise or with the sunset we are just in a beautiful position to get some quality vibrant rays of energy and those those light rays they carry codes they carry codices that um, and flame letters that when we breathe them and inhale them into our personal matrix they are coded to wake us up to help us to um, kind of make the mindset shifts that are necessary for us to grab another gear to engage with the different pieces of life that might not be supporting us so that we can change that up or to maybe engage with some of the ideas that we can use to to really help us to move more move forward so each one of us are going to um, activate um, differently and there are some uh, pieces that are going to resonate to me more than you or vice versa so we have to find our own way and we have to be willing to experiment and maybe take a risk but we also most importantly we have to be willing to be responsible for um, the whole process and not like think well um, I'm gonna do it because Marvina said so we have to do it because it feels right it feels like the thing to do now and um, it's like organically one thing will lead to the other you will be guided towards um, maybe other starcy workers that have different pieces of encouragement and ways that they can um, influence you or help you to uh, have the nerve and the creativity and the courage and whatever strength of conviction to follow through with what you came here to do all right i have one more thing that i um i wanted to um i wanted to say about that um all right i'm sure it'll come to me but anyhow um so go back to the basics the basics are the best and don't feel like you have to um, have anybody like guide you along the whole way you do have excellent fabulous guidance from your own team so never feel like somebody else has better guides than you or someone else has a better plan because what is what my highest guides are kind of guiding me towards will be a little different than yours and it doesn't mean one's better or worse or more important or not is is like we all have a contribution and it's all everybody's is just a little bit different so be willing to do you be willing to um, think outside the herd <laughs> And just remember, I'm going to tell you, this is a, a, a gross way of looking at it, but, you know, the ones that follow the herd, they, they go through the whole process and it's not a pretty ending. But the ones that think for themselves and think outside the box and are willing to, um, to take action 
we're going to be able to get outside those those dark web trapping systems and that is such an important thing right now that that you recognize if you might be um, a little bit hooked in to a, a trapping system so that might look like a uh, programming like for instance if there are different tv shows that um that you have to watch or you have to spend um you know four hours a night in front of the computer or on the phone or in uh, some sort of a gaming thing you want to um do some discernment about that ask your angels uh is this a place where I might be exposing myself to programming that is keeping me squelched, keeping me locked down, is prohibiting me from being able to really rise and shine. There's a lot of, um, of different ways that the uh, dark agenda and, and ugly, I mean, you could call it the devil or dark forces or dark entities or Illuminati or Cabal, however you want to think about it. Uh, I call it the dark web and you can um, think of it how, as how you want to. But if you feel like they have their tentacles entrenched into you and some of the ways that they can do that is, is through our um the things that we love and we consider to be um like um the the greatest inventions of all time like our cell phone so when you go to sleep at night don't sleep with your phone uh sleep outside of the matrix so that way nothing can can uh be programmed while you're sleeping like you can break away from the influence of that turn i always have my wi-fi turned off unless i have to use it and so just be very mindful of um like what what web systems are you just giving yourself over to like some of the you know the smart watches and smart phones they're hooked up to um oh i mean just the dark agenda's way of um running their programs on you and we have to we have to break away from their programs on a regular basis i uh, get outside the wi-fi zone get into some fresh air fresh exercise mindfulness uh, meditations spiritual pursuits Go back to some of the old ways of entertaining ourselves, old ways of learning, like books, um, meeting with other like-minded, high vibrational people, and um, getting yourself uh, on a regular basis, like breaking away from systems that might be influencing you in a negative way and keeping you from being able to do what you came here to do. So if you have questions about this, you can message me or email me or leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But I just really want to encourage you to honor your own inner voice and, and just pay attention to the ideas that you get from that. And they, they may uh, tell you that there's you have to do some uh, detoxing or deprogramming or uh, readjusting your matrix like if it's out of balance in order for you to rise and shine and bloom as a star seed you have to be balanced and your energy body has to be clear or you won't be able to get the um to really see the timelines and understand uh, what your role is and how you can commit and um, benefit those for the higher good of all, not just you, but for all. If it's not for the higher good of all, then, then it's probably something that is like a piece of the dark agenda uh, if the ego is invested in it. 
So work with these ideas, take what speaks to you, even the things that might feel out of your comfort zone or out of your box, ask your own angels to shed some light on that matter and help you to digest those ideas in a way that is uh, meaningful to you because my analogies, they may not work for you, but your own angelic crew, they might be able to get you to um, get that same idea using a different analogy. So be open to that and um, just hold it in your heart I think every day if you create this intention today, I intend to be in the sweet spot of my soul's highest path and highest purpose, then your energy will just motivate towards that goal and commit, follow through with the actions towards that goal and you're going to really start to see some differences on a lot of um, a lot of levels one thing i want to caution you is that um, unfortunately there's times where um, people that that we might love that um, they're waking up at a different uh, time than we are and they may not appreciate us and it might be an unhealthy relationship then so just realize that we may have to distance ourselves, not like forever but maybe temporarily in order to protect us while we're vulnerable and while we're really kind of getting our um our land legs under us and getting our bearings that we may need to uh, set some extra shields of protection around us while uh, we're going through the process so I hope that um, you enjoyed the video today. And like I said, if you have questions, let me know. Thanks a lot. I'm Marvina. Bye-bye.